Chapter 3, Euclidean Vector Spaces, Section 3.1, Vectors in 2-Space, 3-Space, and N-Space. Geometric vectors in two dimensions, also called 2-Space, or in three dimensions, also called 3-Space, are represented by arrows. The direction of the arrowhead specifies the direction of the vector, and the length of the arrow specifies the magnitude. The tail of the arrow is called the initial point of the vector, and the tip, the terminal point. We will denote vectors in boldface type, such as a, b, v, w, and x, and we will denote scalars in lowercase italic type, such as a, k, v, w, and x. You should think of the scalars just like the real numbers that you're used to. When we want to indicate that a vector v has initial point a and terminal point b, then we will write v equals a, b, where a is placed near the uh, initial point and b is placed near the terminal point. Vectors with the same length and direction are said to be equivalent. Equivalent vectors are also said to be equal, which we will indicate by writing v equals w. The vector whose initial and terminal points coincide has length 0, so we'll call this the 0 vector and denote it by a bold 0. We also have the parallelogram rule for vector addition. If v and w are vectors in 2-space or 3-space that are positioned so that their initial points coincide, then the two vectors form adjacent sides of a parallelogram, and the sum v plus w is the vector represented by the arrow from the common initial point of v and w to the opposite vector vertex of the parallelogram. So it kind of looks something like this, where I have, let's say, vector v, vector w, and then I could draw the rest of my parallelogram. And then this vector would be v plus w. In addition to the parallelogram rule, there is the triangle rule for vector addition. So that says if v and w are vectors in 2-space or 3-space that are positioned so that the initial point of w is at the terminal point of v, then the sum v plus w is the vector represented by the arrow from the common initial point of v and w to the terminal point. So that's if I were to draw v and then I take w and I put it at the terminal point. And then I go from the initial point of v to the terminal point of w. And that would be v plus w. So that's using the triangle rule. Notice this is the exact same v plus w we got using the parallelogram rule. You can use either one. They're equivalent. You could see this by putting w back over here and v over here and completing the parallelogram. We can also view vector addition as translation. If v, w, and v plus w are positioned so that their initial points coincide, then the terminal point of v plus w can be viewed as either the terminal point uh, as the point that results when the terminal point of v is translated in the direction of w by a distance equal to the length of w. So that's, you just move along w. That is the terminal point of v moves along w, and you just track where that goes. But you could also view it as the um, terminal point being the terminal point of w translated along in the direction of v. So that's if I were to look at the terminal point of w, I move along v. So what I'm doing is I'm taking this terminal point and I'm moving it up along the direction of v. Just a number of different ways to think about the exact same thing, vector addition. To think of vector subtraction, we take the negative of a vector v, which we denote by minus v, and that's the vector that has the same length as v, but is oppositely directed. So let's say here's v going in this direction, minus v would be going in this direction. Okay, so the difference of v from w, denoted by v minus, w minus v, is taken to be the sum, w plus that negative. We can also do scalar multiplication. If v is a non-zero vector in 2-space or 3-space, and if k is a non-zero scalar, then we define the scalar product of v by k to be the vector whose length is absolute value of k times the length of v, and whose direction is the same as that of v if k is positive and opposite to that if k is negative.
if k is zero or v is zero, then we define kv to be the zero vector. So what we're saying is, let's say here's v, then, uh, for example, this could be 2v. Same direction, just twice as long. That's how we scale it. So kv would just be however much you want to scale by k. Observe that minus 1 times v has the same length as v, but is oppositely directed. Therefore, minus 1, the scalar minus 1, times v will be that negative vector. Since translating a vector does not change it, we agree that the terms parallel and collinear mean the same thing when applied to vectors. We regard the vector 0 as parallel to all vectors. So that means that any vector that goes in the exact same direction is considered parallel, even if I draw it, let's say, right on top. Vector addition satisfies the associative law for addition. That is, u plus v plus w is u plus v plus w. If a vector v in 2 space or 3 space is positioned with its initial point at the origin of a rectangular coordinate system, then the vector is completely determined by the coordinates of its terminal point. We call these coordinates the components of v relative to the coordinate system. Remember, we can pretty much put a vector any place we want because it just has uh, length, magnitude, and a direction, but it doesn't have any specific uh, coordinates, so we might as well just take it and plop it right at the origin and then see where that terminal point is, and we'll call that point the components of the vector. So that's pretty much what we do. And we write the vector is v1, v2 in 2 space with components v1, v2, and we write v equals v1, v2, v3 to denote a vector v in 3 space with components v1, v2, v3. Two vectors in 2 space or 3 space are equivalent if and only if they have the same terminal point when their initial points are at the origin. Algebraically, this means that two vectors are equivalent if and only if their corresponding components are equal. Thus, for example, the vectors v equals v1, v2, v3, and w equals w1, w2, w3 in 3 space are equivalent if and only if their components v1 equals v w1, v2 equals w2, v3 equals w3 are equivalent. If p1, p2 denotes the vector with initial point p1, x1, y1, and terminal point p2, x2, y2, then the components of this vector are given by the formula x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1. So if you want to figure out the vector that goes in between two points, you just uh, subtract their components. Take the components from P2 and subtract the components of P1. The components of a vector in 3 space that has initial point P1, x1, y1, z1, and terminal point P2, x2, y2, z2 are, again, given by subtraction. you got x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1. You just also have z2 minus z1. So what are the components of the vector v equals p1, p2, with initial point p1, 2, minus 1, 4, and terminal point p2, 7, 5, minus 8? Well, all we got to do is just uh, subtract. So we'll take 7 minus that 2, and we'll take 5 minus, minus 1, and minus 8 minus 4, and we'll get 5, 6, negative 12. If n is a positive integer, then an ordered n-tuple is a sequence of n real numbers, v1, v2, through vn. The set of all ordered n-tuples is called n-space, and is denoted by rn. Notice everything we've done so far in 2-space and 3-space was pretty much the same and could easily be generalized to 4-space, and then and so on, 5-space, 6-space, etc. So it's not too much of a stretch to just uh, ex extend everything to n-space. So we say that vectors v equals v1, v2 through vn, and w equals w1, w2 through wn, and rn are said to be equivalent, also called equal, if v1 equals w1, v2 equals w2, and vn equals all the way and all these in between, and vn equals 
wn. We indicate this by writing v equals w. So for example, uh, when is a, b, c, d going to equal 1 minus 4, 2, 7? Well, that'll be if and only if. I'll denote that by writing the double arrow. Uh, a equals 1, b equals negative 4, c equals 2, and d equals 7. Otherwise, they wouldn't be equal, or and this wouldn't be true. If v equals v1, v2 through vn, and w equals w1, w2 through wn are vectors in Rn, and if k is any scalar, then we define their sum pretty much the same way as uh, we did it before, except that we just keep going. We define the uh, scalar scaled vector, scalar multiplication, as k times each of the components. We define the negative as just the negative of each of the components. And we define subtraction the same way as we did before, where it's addition um, just for the negative. So you can just subtract each of the components. So, uh, but we just do a couple of uh, examples where we practice these operations really quick. Let's do v plus w. So v is given here, w is given here. All we have to do is add them, add the components. We'll get five minus one, three, which is the same thing we would get if we uh, did this geometrically, if we graph these two and then put them to the tail or use the parallelogram rule. If we want to get two v, then we just scale each component. So multiply each of these components by two. So we'll get two minus six and four. And if we want minus w, we'll just multiply each component by negative one. So we'll get negative four, negative two, negative one. And we can get v minus w by taking v plus negative w, which we already calculated, or just by subtracting the components. In either case, we get minus three, minus five, and one. If u, v, and w are vectors in Rn, and if k and m are scalars, then u plus v is v plus w. Addition is commutative. Uh, addition is also associative. u plus v plus w is u plus v plus w. u plus the zero vector is zero plus u, which is just u. So addition with the zero vector behaves as you would expect. u plus negative u is the zero vector k times u plus v is ku plus kv. Scalar multiplication is distributive over vector addition. And scalar addition, k plus m times u, is ku plus mu. It's also distributive. So you could add the scalars and then distribute, or you could add vectors and distribute. Scalar multiplication is also associative. You could do k times mu or kmu. And 1 times u is u. If v is a vector in Rn and k is a scalar, then 0 times v is the 0 vector. k times 0 is also the 0 vector. So we could take the scalar 0 times a vector and get the 0 vector, or we could take the scalar k times any 0 vector, or the 0 vector, and get the 0 vector. Minus 1 times v is minus v as before. So all of these are fairly straightforward to prove. You could just write a general vector, for example, u equals u1, u2, through un, add that to uh, v, which is v1, v2, through vn. You're going to get that u1 plus v1 is added together, and then you could swap the order because these guys are just scalars, they're real numbers. So addition we already know is commutative for those guys. So that's how you can get vector addition, for example. And you could prove every single one in pretty much the same way. It's not uh, too difficult. If w is a vector in Rn, then w is said to be a linear combination of the vectors v1, v2, through vr in Rn, if it can be expressed in the form w equals k1, v1, plus k2, v2, and so on through kr, vr where k1, k2 through kr are scalars.
These scalars are called the coefficients of the linear combination. In the case where r equals 1, this formula becomes w equals k1 v1, so that a linear combination of a single vector is just a scalar multiple of that vector. So for example, if I wanted to get, for, let's say w was equal to the vector 1, 1, I could also write that as a linear combination of the vectors 1, 0, and 0, 1. If I just took uh, k1 equals 1, so I could take 1 times the vector 1, 0, and add that to 1 times the vector 0, 1. So notice in this case, w is a linear combination of the vectors 1, 0, and 0, 1, at least the way that I wrote them, and this generalizes all the way to our vectors 